Today, we're installing a new floor on the bus. In a previous video, when I reinstalled the windows and resealed them, we still had some leaks. Well, I went back and fixed all the spots that were leaking and it has been absolutely pouring down rain today. We have standing water in our yard. This is now the second time we've had downpours like this within the last week. Neither time do we have any leaks. So we got that fixed. Hey everybody, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Kenny and along with my wife Chrissy and our six children, we're converting this school bus into an RV. In the last video, we installed new insulation in the entire bus. Now that that's done, we're gonna be installing a new floor. But before we do that, we have a giant mess to clean up left over from installing the insulation. Have some wood here for the floor. They're eight foot longs and they're six inches too wide to fit in the base of the floor here. So we have to chop off six inches off the end of each board. And how we're doing that is this. It's a rip cut um, circular saw edge guide made by Craig. You can attach it to pretty much any circular saw. It's adjustable and basically once you get it set up for your saw and dialed in, you can show you here. There. There's a ruler on here of measurements and you just set this red line to whatever measurement you want and then you can just cut away. This thing's really coming in handy because if you need to make multiple cuts, you just set it up the size you want, and you can just start cutting. So all I need is six inches off each board, set it six inches, just cut all the boards. I did save one board to cut to show you guys, and, and I will do that now since we haven't cleaned up yet. And I did put my safety goggles on because safety first. But that's how it works. It's gonna come in really handy because I think at some point I'm gonna have to cut a bunch of strips and um, it's already come in handy just for this application instead of having to measure six inches off each board, marking it, putting a line on there, just set the guide up for six inches and go to cut. And so now that I showed you how to do that, we're gonna get back to cleaning this mess up. Me and the boys are gonna work on cleaning this up, and as soon as we're done cleaning it up, we'll come back. And it's all cleaned up. Just like that. Actually, it wasn't that easy. It took us a lot longer to clean that up than I thought it would. Um, it was just a bunch of trash and stuff left over from the insulation and some of the sealant and uh, butyl tape from the windows were stuck on the floor in certain spots, so we got all that cleaned up. And now we're gonna put the floor in. Got some foam board insulation to go beneath the plywood and we're gonna lay that down. We're gonna put some adhesive down underneath the foam board, adhesive on top of it between the foam board and the plywood. All right, we got the first piece back here cut. Cut this one in half that way. The foam and the wood would overlap each other and they wouldn't line up directly on the seams. So we're gonna put some adhesive down and get this stuck to the floor. Oh. 
to go, yeah. We're going to probably get on this side of it. All right, man, it is a hot day today. Actually, it's only like 80, but it's been cool for a long time. So this 80 feels like 100, probably. Um, we're taking a bit of a different route than we started with. We started off by putting foam and then wood, foam, wood, foam, wood. And um, now we just went through and put the rest of the foam down. So it's down with adhesive underneath it. Now we're gonna go back and put adhesive between the wood and the foam. And we also are going to add some screws to help hold it down. Like there, and there. And we're only putting those, hopefully, where they're gonna be hidden to where you can't see it, just to help hold the floor down until the adhesive cures all the way. And then we'll be good to go. So this job will be finished today. And then we can move on to bigger and better things besides putting floor in. We can run wires and pipes and build couches and beds, fun stuff. You know, I'll lower it, you got a razor end up as we get picked up. Turn flat. And now razor end up higher. There you go. Kind of go up there and we'll lower it. It's much easier than pipe. After we get them down, we're using a countersink bit. So the screws we put in are flush with the wood. So the floor, floor is all laid down and uh, it's dark right now. So come back tomorrow and give you a better look. <laughs> now that we got the new floor installed, we need to protect it. We got some polyurethane, some verithane to coat the floor with, to protect it, seal everything in because we want to protect the wood. We don't want any damage to happen. Anything gets spilled on it, we don't want that to damage the wood and make it rot away. We want to make the wood last as long as possible. So we have the Verithane and we bought a pure lambskin applicator. It's supposed to be really good for applying it. 
in the it's kind of nasty outside today gloomy and rainy but there's no leaks in here anymore so free to work inside I guess we better get started on a side note I have never done this before so hopefully it turns out well we'll see Okay, this is where the camera has to go away because I'm painting myself into a corner, so to speak. Coat one is down. All right, let's do coat number two. Code three is going on. Coat number four. All right, it's been three full days since we put the final coat on. Let's see what it looks like. Take my shoes off. Turned out amazing, I think. Look at that. All right, this piece here, it's a cutout. And it's like that because underneath here is access to our fuel tank. We did that for a reason. That way, if we ever needed to access the fuel tank from this part, we would be able to without having to cut the floor open. So I went ahead and cut the floor open early and probably attach like a handle there or something so we can lift it up real easy. But it's cut out like that for that purpose. All right, guys, what do you think of the floor? Let me know in the comments how you think it turned out. It's, uh, it's been a long road to get to this point where we're gonna be building stuff, but it's well worth it. I think the floor looks really, really good. We ended up putting four coats of everything down. We applied two coats. On the gallon can that we got, it says if you wait more than 12 hours before you apply another coat to lightly sand everything before you apply any more coats. And it just so happened after the first two coats that we it was over 12 hours, so we lightly sanded the whole thing and used the tack cloth and dust mop 
to kind of clean up everything and then applied two more coats and then it's been sitting for three days since then and this is the result. So the next step we got is we're gonna start building stuff. Probably putting the wall pieces in, couches, and moving on back from there. All right guys, if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. It really does help us out. And if you're not already subscribed, consider subscribing so you can follow along on our adventures as we convert this school bus into an RV. Till next time. Life is a winding road.